say you. Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, what's going on? It's me, your host, Jen Glanz. How y'all doing? It's the month of October. It's my favorite month of the year. And I say this laughing because for my entire life, my 31 years of existence, I have not had a favorite month until this year when I decided to choose October. And why did I choose October? Because for the past two years, I've been city hopping, living in a new city every year. This is the first chunk of year where I'm back settled into New York. And one of the things I appreciate is the season change, the fresh new weather, the hint of a cold spark that makes me want to wrap myself in a jacket, leaves falling, the smell of pine cones. No, those are not natural to New York City. I bought them at Whole Foods, but they make my entire apartment smell like a forest. I don't know why, but this month of October is making me feel really, really happy, really calm, and just grateful for this this change of season, which alerts us all that the year is almost over, which is a really powerful, but heartbreaking, but beautiful thing to think about. You've been listening to the show, maybe you've been listening for years, or maybe this is your very first episode, but at the core, the true purpose of this podcast is to help you disrupt your life. So thanks for listening, and happy, happy, happy October to you. Before we jump into the topic of this podcast for this week, it's a solo episode, it's just me, I want to talk about a couple of cool things. And these are things that I wanted to highlight this week to you. Some of my most favorite things, some of the things that I'm grateful for. The very first thing I'm super, super grateful for is the show Sesame Street. I don't know when the last time you've watched it is. I can't even remember the last time I watched it on television. But one of the things I've noticed about Sesame Street is that over the years, they've stayed modern. They haven't shied away from issues that a lot of people have, such as women equality, LGBTQ issues, racial issues. And this week, and this is what was so extraordinary, is that they tackled the topic of addiction and having a parent who is suffering from addiction. And I can only imagine being four, five, six, whatever age you watch Sesame Street, seeing these issues unfold in front of me and at such a young age, remembering the key thing we all struggle with, that we're not alone no matter what it is we're experiencing or how different we think we feel. And I just want to give them the hugest shout out for covering such an important issue, addiction. We've talked about it on the show. I've mentioned that it's affected my life personally, caring for and watching those in my life struggle with addiction. And when I was going through it, when I was watching the people struggle and and trying to be there for them and, oh, I can't even get into it with you right now, but I just remember feeling so alone And I felt like I had nobody else in the world who was possibly experiencing this. And it was such a tough feeling added on to the fact that you are experiencing someone you desperately love deal with addiction. So I just want to say thank you to Sesame Street and thank you to anyone who has a platform and they use it for good. And I I hope that I can continue to do that as well because... I think that one of the main things we have to talk about, and last week was World Mental Health Day, is that we need to be more open about the mental health struggles we go through, and addiction is one of that. 
And because we are more open and hopefully we can band together and talk more about it and have urgency behind it, maybe then there can be more resources, more free resources for people who are struggling, who need help, who might be scared to come forward and admit that. But at least the very first step they can admit out loud is that they feel alone in what they're going through. Because the truth is, no matter how ugly your struggle is, other people have gone through something similar or... Other people are also going through a struggle that maybe when you hear about theirs and they hear about yours, you don't feel better, but you just feel less alone. If you're feeling really alone, I just want to throw it out there. Come hang out with us in the Secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. There is over 1,300 people in there ready to talk to you, have open, honest conversations in there. Everything that's inside the group is completely private. So come, bear your soul, talk, or just come to give advice to other people who are in it. We would love to see you there. If you're in New York City, come hang out at the in-person You're Not Getting Any Younger meetup that's happening on November 12th. Details in the secret Facebook group. There's also a poll going on right now for you to tell us where you live. I hope next year to take this on the road, to throw more events, to meet more of you and hug more of you in person. And if you enjoy the podcast, one last thing is to come leave us a review, scroll down on your phone, hit the stars, write a sentence. A sentence max is all you have to write to leave us a review. It helps us keep the show free. It also helps us bring on some really badass guests. I want to talk to you about something that I'm actively working on and completely failing at, and that's the art of making friends. I've realized that at age 31, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm good at writing, I'm good at public speaking. I'm really good at even one-on-one conversations with people giving advice. But I am so terribly bad at making friends. Like, it's almost laughable because I just don't know how to do it. The other night I went to an event and there was this girl sitting next to me and I tried to make eye contact and then I got really weird when she made eye contact and finally she just reached out her hand and was like hi I'm Allison and I reached mine back and said hi I'm Jen and then I looked away because I was really awkward should I continue the conversation what should I say next so then I just bluntly asked her I'm like how'd you hear about the event and we struck up conversation the event happened it was a speaker after the speaker was done she got up to leave and I literally panicked I didn't know if I should ask for her phone number see if she wants to be Instagram friends I really liked her I would love to have hung out with her but I didn't know how to close the deal of friendship with her so I just sat there silent my face was bright red and I'm just staring at her and she's like okay well it was good to meet you and I'm like yeah you too and I had so many things I wanted to say like hey do you want to exchange contact info so we can go to an event together or get coffee but I literally said nothing looked down at my phone and felt like horrible I felt so juvenile I felt in that moment so embarrassed by myself because I just didn't know what to do And I'm curious. I don't really have any suggestions on this. I'm curious to hear from you. So come to the Facebook group. Tell us. Please DM me on Instagram. Tell me what you would have done in that situation. I mean, would you have offered to give your number? Would you have become Instagram friends? Like, how do you know if that's appropriate or if that's just creepy? I guess that that's my problem that I'm facing. The other time I tried to make friends this week, because I'm really eager to try to make more friends, is I was shoe shopping at DSW because they have a buy one, get one half off sale, just an FYI for you. And I was trying really hard to just make friends because I felt like, you know, shoe shopping is like a really personal thing. And if people are trying on the same shoe as you, it's a great opportunity to say, hey, are they comfortable? That I like them too. You know, I felt like it was just like an easy way to maybe make friends. Somebody once told me that she used to scour Forever 21s to make friends and that's how she met her best friends. So I tried to do that at DSW and there was a woman next to me. We were both trying on these Tom's boots. And I looked at her and I was like, oh, are they comfortable? And she looked me in the eyes, pivoted in the opposite direction, and practically ran away. It was like I had freaked her out. It felt as if nobody in her entire life spoke to her while shoe shopping. And I felt so weird about it. Luckily, I didn't feel that weird that I just exited the store. I still buy. I still found and bought my buy one, get one free shoe. But it made me feel like, you know what, Jen, you've hit rock bottom on this friendship journey. So once again, if you have any tips, 
you know where to find us. Secret Facebook group for you're not getting any younger. DM me on Instagram at Jen Glance. Let me know as you're listening to this podcast. Seriously, as you listen to this episode, screenshot it, post it on IG, host a a poll for what people would do in my situations and let me know because I am totally trying to crowdsource this for myself to figure out how to become a better friendship maker. You probably know this already, but I have something new happening. Finally, thebride.com. It's a place where you can go and vote on my most personal wedding decisions. And I'm going to listen to you. If you tell me to do my wedding in South Dakota, I'll do it in South Dakota. If you tell me to have my bachelorette party in Montana, that's where I'm going to go. If you tell me to wear a green dress, I'll wear a green dress. So head on to the website, finallythebride.com, cast your vote. You will find out how this all plays out because I'm going to write about it and I'm going to release a book about it just for you. Okay, today's official podcast topic is all about answering the question, how are you? We get asked that question probably more than any other question, yet when people ask us, we have really horrible answers to it. Most of the time we lie. We say good or fine. But the truth is we are completely deflecting from connecting with that other person because we're refusing to give the truth. The other day I was on the subway and someone asked me, a stranger asked me, how are you? And I said, fine. And they looked me in the eye and they laughed and they said, nobody's fine. And I thought to myself, wow, you are a great bullshit detector because I'm having a really horrible day. And I thought to myself, you know what? Every time someone asks us that question, we owe it to them to tell the truth. And I know sometimes we feel weird about answering the question, you know, I'm not doing well or I'm feeling really bad because we're scared of being vulnerable or we're scared of making that person not feel good because we don't want to bring people down with us, right? When we're upset, we're scared that if we show that, we're going to ruin the mood of the party or the brunch or the phone call. And on the flip side, we don't always want to admit when we're having a good day because we don't want to make people feel bad about their own day. Some of the best days of my life, days when I was on the Today Show or my book came out or I had a really great first or second date with Adam and people would ask me how my day was, I'd be like, yeah, it was was whatever, only because I was scared of feeling like I was rubbing something in their face. But here's the crazy thing. We cannot control how other people will feel and we're not responsible for their feelings. So when somebody asks us that simple question, how are you? You have the right to respond however you want. And I challenge you to choose honesty. At an event I went to the other night, the speaker was saying that when she asks a person how are they, she grabs their hand before they answer. And that human to human touch, if you're in an appropriate setting to do that, you know, you don't want to do that to a stranger or at an event where someone might be creeped out, but if you're with a good friend and you're at dinner with them or you're getting coffee with them and it's okay to do this, just grab their hand when you ask that question. And and like she said, They're going to feel so connected, so safe with you that what comes out will be completely honest and real and you might cry and that's okay because crying is a release of emotion, a release of energy that's desperate to come out of your body. And I've been trying this lately. I tried it with Adam, my fiance. I tried it with friends. When I asked them how they are, I grabbed them and within seconds, the bullshit is gone. It goes from being, yeah, today's okay to being you know, I'm really stressed out about this or I'm really scared about this. So that's a really good technique to get the truth out from other people. But here's three tips to start telling the truth for yourself when someone asks how you are. One, ask them if they really want to know. So when someone asks that question, maybe it's in passing, maybe they're just trying to fill in some silence. But if you're having a tough day or you want someone to talk about it with, because I know when you're going through hell, sometimes all you want is someone just to listen to you, not give you advice, just listen to you. It's appropriate to say to the person, do you really want to know the real answer? And if they say, yeah, sure, or 
eh, I'm not really in the mood to take on a lot of drama today, that can guide you on how you answer, right? So you're almost setting them up. You're setting the stage, setting the table for how much you should drop. The second thing you can do is share to them, I want to be honest with you about how I'm doing today, but I'm also not looking for advice. Because again, you might feel worried that if you drop a huge problem on this person, they have to take on the burden of helping you, but that's not even what you really want. So if someone says to me, hey Jen, how are you? I could say to them, look, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not doing very well today. I'm so appreciative of you asking. I'm not looking for advice. I just want to vent. So you can preface it that way. And then the third final way, and this is great for when you have really good news, is to just let the person know today's been a really good day and I'm so grateful for it. Rather than just rubbing it in their face, like today is awesome. I live the best life. Be real about it. Today's the kind of day that I was dreaming about for years. Today's the day that I was working really hard for. So if you're ever scared about answering the question honestly, just be honest to the person back. Don't hold back because then you hold in emotion and you begin to resent the other person for not caring about you or understanding you. But the truth is they don't know you deeply. They don't know what's going on. My question for you, my friends, my listeners, how are you? Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.